Hey there, fellows. In this episode, I suggest we try some mechanical mods. So conventional pistons and cylinders are round, right? But for the sake of curiosity, why don't we try making a set of pistons that are square section? Let's do this. Check this out, guys. So the parts we're making are pretty complex. Cutting out a square section cylinder, I mean, we could have tried doing it using a milling machine, but that would have been a nightmare. Instead, we are using this EDM machine. That uses a wire as a cutter. We've already placed one blank in there, that's all good. Now, the reason we've drilled a hole through this was to pull the wire through it. And the way the machine works is simple. The wire moves around, you have electricity going through it, the whole thing is liquid-cooled and cutting occurs somehow. <laughs> so check this out. Cylinder 1 is ready. And in my opinion, it looks fantastic. The precision is unreal. That's what you get with an EDM machine. This was cut out in one single swipe. The clearance is equal to the thickness of the wire. And there it is. This looks really neat. The time it took to cut out one cylinder was about four and a half hours. But no worries, we'll be patient. Check this out, here we have the cylinders. The ones they cut out on that EDM machine. These are the blanks that will later become the pistons. They did a really good job with the clearances, as you can see. We are going to have to taper these pistons slightly, because as we know up here they get hotter, meaning greater expansion in this area. And so a slight taper will prevent stuff from seizing. We also need to work out where the piston pin will be centered, measure these heights. Also, these sleeves need to be pressed into the engine block, which in itself might present a challenge. If these surfaces are uneven, that's going to result in stuff binding. Right, let's do some cutting, drilling, milling, and finish building this engine with the square section pistons. Let's go. Check this out, here's what makes this a bit of a headache. All of these need to be even relative to each other. So we are having to machine the sleeves as well as the block. But we're gonna plonk these in there. Slip them in without using a press. The upper bit is going to be overboard. And so we'll place these in there and it'll sort of be like on a Volga motor. The idea is to sandwich them in. So we've done all of the measurements associated with the rod and the piston stroke, and now we need to measure the distance between the center of the pin and the deck to find out where we need to cut out the hole for the pin inside our square section piston. We install the crankshaft with one rod fitted to it, and then we measure. The piston head has to be 6 millimeters thick, meaning the pin will be right up against the piston head. Check this out, guys. The sleeves are inside the block, though they are still poking out slightly. We'll machine that out. Now, initially, we did want to use rods of this type, but they are just too long. The crankshaft will be left stock and unmodified. As for the pistons, we have a conrod in there. Now we just need to measure, make some marks, drill, cut, and finalize the pistons. There's still a lot of work to do, we have to drill through them, remove excess material from inside the bore, 
Cut out the grooves for the rings, and I still haven't told you what we're using for rings. Remember that video where we fitted rubber rings to an engine? And rubber rings is what we'll be using here as well. Now it's time to drill, cut and assemble, let's go. Now, this isn't a serious issue, but this is a setback. You see, the thing is, the height of the piston has changed, and as a result, when the conrod makes its way up, it actually comes into contact with the sleeve. But this can be resolved. We'll just make some recesses in the sleeves to allow the rod to move around freely. After sorting the cylinders, we will begin work on the pistons. These do require some modification. So far, we've only made the bore for the rod. We have yet to cut out the grooves for the piston rings, but we'll get to that. And now let's carry on. With the pistons now being square, they've become physically quite a bit smaller. There's a lot of interference with the rods, meaning a lot of test fitting and trimming is required. Then it's more test fitting, fine tuning. We've actually been at this for a week at this point, because machining and milling is very time consuming. We've been doing a lot of test fitting and adjustments. For the hundredth time I'll be assembling the whole thing with the pistons and all of that stuff, we need to check the height of the pistons, shorten them if required. Also, we'll have to trim the sleeves. We had them made slightly taller than needed, so that we can trim them to the required height. And we've run into another issue. You'll see that the stock skirt is slightly shorter than what we have on the square section pistons. The difference is about 6 millimeters. As it is, the piston is coming into contact with the crankshaft. So look here, this entire kit is complete. We've got our lovely square section cylinders as well as the square pistons. Pins, rods, everything is ready. Crankshaft, engine block, and now it's time to commence assembly. And we have quite a bit of experience assembling engines. So let's piece all of it together and get to the interesting part, which is starting the engine with the square pistons. We had to pause the assembly process because we have run into a delightful issue. I secured the head with a couple of bolts, proceeded to turn the camshaft, and the valves are coming into contact with the sleeves. You can see the marks. And so now we're going to have to take this tool and use it to make room for the valves.
Check this out. The engine with the square pistons has been assembled and installed. And we are about to start it up for the first time. It is cranking, that's a good start. Let's check on the condition of the plugs. Should have fitted two rings, one doesn't seem to be enough. Not super wet, but it is damp. Not a lot at all. So four, four, six, zero, five. The compression figures are awesome. We've decided to remove the head as well as the pistons, see what has become of the rubber piston rings, what condition they're in, and most likely we'll be fitting one extra rubber ring to each piston. So we were unable to start the engine the first time around. That's because there wasn't enough compression. And so we've taken everything apart, had a look, inspected the parts and found a few curious issues. Anyway, here's what we've done. We have added a second compression ring. In our case it's made of rubber. Hopefully this additional ring allows us to boost the compression by enough. But let's reassemble the engine and try starting it once again. Let's go! Hit it. I wanted to say it's unconvincing, but actually it's fine. Engine works pretty much like it should. Now the pistons have gotten warm, and are you hearing that noise? That knock. So that play... or slack, rather, anyway, it has taken its toll. But okay. But the important thing is that the engine is working with these square section pistons. And to think some people said it wouldn't work. It does, and if that's the case, then this calls for a drive, of course. Now, obviously, this reduced the engine's displacement. Also, the compression ratio is somewhat diminished. So, this isn't going to be some powerhouse. But is it even going to drive? We're about to find out. Let's go. Engine is running, that's good. And now the interesting part. All right, we're moving. Okay, the car is actually moving. Square pistons about the same displacement. Lots of smoke coming out of the breather, but hey. We are moving, but I would love to drive around in some place where there's a bit more space to give the thing some beans and overall get a feel for how well this engine operates. But so far it is moving along confidently, and that is always a good thing. Throttle response is pretty good. In first gear, it's actually accelerating pretty well, and it's getting up to max revs. Without too much drama, this is very nice. Let me try second. And we're cruising. I just needed to give it some beans in first, and now it is happy to move along in second. Here we are, scooting along. Now I guess I should try doing a burnout or something. Oh, 
Holy cow. It is trying. Nice. Okay, so we've taken the car back inside. And in the engine bay, we see... Well, the entire thing is covered in... I mean, it's not the entire thing, but half of it is covered in oil. It was being blown out from the breather, but this developed as we were driving. Initially it was smoke, but then it started spewing oil. But let's crack it open and see what condition the pistons are in, the cylinders, and of course the rings. So the cylinders. Now you probably would have guessed that initially they didn't have a mirror finish, the EDM cutting did leave some scratches, and even though we did try to remove them using sandpaper, it still wasn't perfectly smooth. But even after the engine ran for such a short period of time, you can see that some spots were starting to attain a mirror finish. Yes, certain areas in the cylinders were being polished. And here it seems like the rubber piston rings might not have been doing their job. Looks like some gases were blowing by them and finding their way into the block. I mean, look at the soot that they left behind. That's where the gases were blowing by. Into the engine block. Now let's see what condition the pistons are in. Okay, as expected. You can clearly see where the gases were blowing by. The rubber has burned to a crisp. It would appear as if the rings that we bought were not of very high quality. But the piston itself actually seems to be... in pretty decent condition. In certain spots these were starting to get polished, meaning they were rubbing up against the cylinder wall. It would seem as if when the piston was transitioning, that the corners were under increased pressure. They have become all shiny, which says that they were pressing up against the cylinder walls hard. This upper ring has been fried. It must not have been sitting tightly enough. Gases were blowing by, but they weren't getting past the second ring. It was keeping them contained, which is good. Now, honestly, I have never seen an engine with square section pistons. If you have or you know where you'll find them, let us know in the comments down below. What can I tell you, though? This was a fun experiment. The compression rings are a tough issue to solve. We tried to solve it by fitting rubber rings, which sort of worked, not the full 107%. But the engine ran, you saw it all for yourselves. And that's all I got for you. Don't be afraid to experiment. And that's it for this video. Catch you guys later.